According to the Library of Congress, in 1862, President Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation opened the door for African Americans to enlist in the Union Army. Although many had wanted to join the war effort earlier, they were prohibited from enlisting by a federal law dating back to 1792. President Lincoln had also feared that if he authorized their recruitment, border states would secede from the Union. By the end of the war, almost 200,000 African American soldiers had joined the fight. They were known as the U.S. Colored Troops. We had the privilege of sitting down with Mrs. Vivian Sims, who was an educator for many decades, before finding out that there were soldiers of her race who also bravely fought in that war. She has lived in Pulaski, Tennessee for 50 years, and that town has a difficult part of its history as being the place where the Ku Klux Klan began. Join us at the table as we hear a redemptive story of what is now being remembered about Pulaski. Welcome to the Steel Magnolias podcast. We are two sisters here to have uplifting conversations about life in the South. The South is full of beautiful diversity in landscape, people groups, and culture, and we want to showcase each part. We've got plenty of room at our table, so pull up your chair. I want you to just kind of briefly tell us about where you were born and raised. I was born in, in Manhattan General Hospital, then talk Lion Hospital, in downtown New York City. My family were from North Carolina. They were, they, they were I would say, prominent farmers. They had large farms in North Carolina. And my mother heard that New York City had gold on the streets. <laughs> and so she married the first man who told her he would take her to New York City, and that was my father. Wow. <laughs> and so I was born in New York City, in downtown New York, and it cost $30. <laughs> wow. And we lived in Brooklyn until time for me to go to college. And that was the year the war, the Second World War was over. Wow. And I was determined I was going to go to college, but no, no college in New York City would take anybody who was graduating from school the year the war was over. They had a GI Bill of Rights. Okay. And that was the year the war was over, and all of the soldiers and sailors were coming out of the Army mm-hmm. or, the, or the Navy. And it was so many of them that very few people who graduated from high school at that time were able to go to college. So my mother had a friend, and she said, why don't you try to go to Fisk University? I said, Fisk University? (laughs) And she said, yes, Fisk University. I said, where in the heck is Fisk University? (coughs) She says, it's in Tennessee. I said, well, where is Tennessee? (laughs) (laughs) They sent me back a letter and said, you're welcome at Fisk University. Wow. Wow. Nobody went with me. My mother, nobody went with me to to Tennessee, to Nashville, Tennessee. The car was dirty because they had an engine in the front, and a lot of smoke and dirt came out of the engine as the train went along the tracks. And that's why all black folks had to go to the front of the train, because they're going to get dirty. And we, I did get dirty. And uh, I got a job teaching in Nashville in 1950. In 1950. I was the first art teacher they hired in Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. Oh, mm-hmm. my, my principal wanted an art teacher in the school. It was a high school. And it's high school. And I had majored in art. The first time... Fish University had a major in art. And so they hired me. And so I was an art teacher the entire time, including when I came here. And that's going to be an interesting story. Wow. And that's how I got to Nashville. So you were a teacher <laughs> in 1950. 1950, you were a teacher. I graduated in 1950. Okay. Uh huh. And then from there, did you come to Pulaski? Oh, no, 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 no. I had two husbands between that. <laughs> 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 but I continued teaching in Nashville. 
Well, I want to ask a few questions. Yes. First of all, what year did you marry Henry Sims and move to Pulaski? Uh, in 1971. 1971. Mm-hmm. And had you been to Pulaski to visit oh, yeah. over because the years because uh, yes, you were friends with them? My yes. boyfriend had brought me here. Yes. Okay. Because he had taught school here. Yes. Sure. Yes. Okay. Yes. So he you had, had been school. visiting. So he brought me here to meet his friends. Over yes. the years. Right. Right. Okay. Uh-huh. And did you know before you moved here some of Pulaski's history of being where the KKK had I did not. If okay. I had I known, I never would have married him. Okay. <laughs> I wondered that. No. Okay. No. Uh. Uh-uh. Wow. <coughs> well, what were some of your initial impressions of this area when you moved to Pulaski? Well, everybody, everybody was accommodating because, like this, my husband had already bought this house, right? Okay. And he already bought he was the house established, and he already bought other property, and he was already. In a good position, a good position socially mm-hmm. and financially. Right. Okay. 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 And so, so people were cordial and nice to me. I, I can't say anybody. If they did do something bad, I called in the EEOC and I got it straightened out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. okay. And so they realized there was some toughness to me that they didn't want to have to deal with. Mm-hmm. So they get they were nice to me all the time. And the schools were already integrated when I got here. Yeah. This was the first school in the state. Of, the first school in the state of Tennessee was integrated here in Pulaski, Tennessee. Really? Yes. Whoa! Interesting. Most people don't know that. I didn't know that. That's and I'm right. a native, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. Uh-huh. Wow. That's right. Uh-huh. Oh, well, let me tell you how I found out by the United States Color Truth. After I had this place, place this house, place on the National Register of Historic Places. I decided I was going to have a a big party, invite everybody in the county, free entertainment and everything. But I was concerned that some of the black people might not come because this was a a white during the Civil War. This house was on the side of the Civil War, and black people were slaves. Okay. Okay. And this was part of the Confederate? Oh, yeah. I mean, this house was? 1835 is when okay. it was built. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Before the Wilt War started. Yeah. Okay. I heard that, that down here at Elkton that a prominent black man owned. The family was having some type of an affair down there so people could come and see this old house. And I decided, I said, let me go down there and see who's down there. I can fight to, mm-hmm. you know, come here. Particularly black, black, black people, because sure. a lot of black people live in Elton. Now, I'm a Yankee. I don't know what color the, the Confederates were. I, I never thought that the black man was fighting. And I started talking to them, and they gave me a brochure. And he told me, and I said, I mean, what are, what are these soldiers doing, black soldiers doing here? This is, this is the United States colored troops. I said, what's the United States? He said, the slave, when they were free, Abraham Lincoln freed the slave so they could join the Union Army because he could not win the war because he did not have enough Yankees coming down here to fight. Yeah. Otherwise, they would have lost the war. Mm-hmm. And that's the first time I ever heard about the United States. Mm-hmm. I went home and wrote that bro and wrote read that brochure. I was in a state of shock. Wow. They said 200,000 former black men joined the Union Army. 20,000 joined in the state of Tennessee. 2,400 joined on the hill right up there. 2,400 of them. For days, I just couldn't get my brain straightened up. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. You had to be saying, why has no one ever told me this? Right. You see, all my people from North Carolina... So I called up my cousins. I say, and, and, they, and one of them was a history teacher. I said, you ever hear the United States country? He said, I hear it. I said, did we have any relatives who, who fought? He said, oh, yeah, we had relatives who fought in the war. I said, what? How come I never heard of this before? Wow. Right. When I found that out, I said, 
I can't believe. And I started doing the research, mm-hmm. and I did. I found that I found that uncle. I, I found my great 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 grandfather who was a who was on during the war. He had been told by his owner to buy property because. The property will increase in value as time goes on, oh, and you'll always have some money, and you'll always have a place to grow some food, okay, okay, with your family. This took a hold of my soul. Mm-hmm. This took a, a big, 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 made a big hold in my soul. And I got the name. I got the names of all of the men, all of the who were in the Union Army, black men who were in the Union Army. Mm-hmm. You don't find just one. You can find, because that was generations ago. You might find four or five with mm-hmm. your name on it, you know? In fact, when I first found out, I had a list. They have a museum down here in Muffersburg. And, she, and when I got back to Giles County, I took that, those names and put them in my pocketbook. And when I would see two or more black people together, I would go and say, hey! I said, do you know about the United States Colored Troops? Not nobody knows it existed, black or white. I can't just say this is a black thing or white thing. Nobody knows that 2,400 men lived up on that hill. Black men, four, lived up on that hill. Some of you seen that picture there. Wow. If it hadn't been for them, even Abraham Lincoln said that. If it had mm-hmm. not been from them, they could not have won the war because they didn't have enough white men who wanted to come out of the north to, to fight. Now what I need to do is to get the word out in the public, get stories out, get books out, and 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 tell the tell the white people who write the history book, be honest. Be honest. Tell the truth about it so black children can learn the truth like white children learn the mm-hmm. truth. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Their forefathers were brave warriors and died so that you could be free. Yeah. That's what it was. That's right. all it was. Mm-hmm. And they gladly did it. Well, <laughs> I just can't wait for our listeners that are going to hear this podcast to hear your voice and hear the passion that you have Uh at 95 years old I know people are going to be listening to this inspired and I'm even thinking that there might be some people listening to this that they too are just hearing for the first time ever right of the U.S. colored troops right Uh, everywhere I go yes in fact, you ought to see that little piece of paper I used to carry around everybody to ask them. And, and when they told me what their names were, it was extremely rare that I didn't find it. But you see what happened. They could have had an ancestor who was in a different unit. Right. They weren't right. all in the same unit. That's yeah. right. Okay. And so, therefore, if they looked at another unit, they could find that name in another unit. But when they find out their name is there, that they were like brave warriors. Mm-hmm. You should see the big smiles everybody have on, on their face. I bet. <laughs> well, Miss Sims, we join your battle in getting the word out Thank about you. the U.S. Colored Troops. Yes. I appreciate That's very that. important. Mm-hmm. Thank you for being with us well, today. Thank you yes. for inviting me. You've just listened to an episode of the Steel Magnolias podcast, an independent show funded solely on support from listeners like you and a few advertisers from time to time. For reminders of what we just said and links to what we just mentioned, take a look at the description of this episode. They are right there. Are you enjoying the show? We hope you'll text a friend or a loved one to tell them about the podcast. Make sure they know how to get to a podcast first. And we invite you to join our mailing list to be the first to know about episodes, giveaways, events, and even those gatherings. Sign up at steelmagnoliaspodcast.com.